Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is November the 22nd, 2011. We have a random roles debate. Be it resolved that it is better to be an optimist than a realist. My name is Dave. I'll be your speaker for this evening. And our Prime Minister will be selected at random. Speaking for seven minutes, please welcome. The role of Prime Minister goes to Michelle. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, most welcome adjudicators and welcome everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I was so optimistic, Margie, that I was going to get this role. I have absolutely no idea. Today's resolution, ladies and gentlemen, is be it resolved that it is better to be an optimist than a realist. And before we go any further in this discussion, I'd like to define those terms for you so that we're actually all on the same page. It is better, better meaning it is more advantageous or effective to be an optimist. An optimist is defined as a person who takes a favorable view of the world than a realist. And a realist is defined as a person who views the world as it literally is. To outline the government's main points for this debate, I have three main points on the benefits of optimism. Optimism, actually, before I go a little bit further, optimism looks at, an optimistic point of view, looks at the brighter side of life. It looks at the probability that something is going to happen, and it does not believe necessarily in practicality, but the thoughts are deep-rooted in the good. So if we look at that definition, it looks at the brighter side of life, the first point, it looks at the probability, number two, that something impossible can happen, and its thoughts are deeply rooted in the good. So why, why is this even worth discussing? Doesn't it sound marvelous, though? The brighter side of life, the probability that something will happen, and is deeply rooted in the good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why it is better than a life deeply rooted in realism. I'd like to look at some different examples as to how this can affect our life. In order to react or act positively, it's actually easier, ladies and gentlemen, than for us to react negatively. That may be hard to believe. I'm asking you, and possibly to stretch your imagination, especially if you've had a bad day. But it actually is easier to smile than it is to frown. It's also better for us because it uses some good muscles when we smile versus when we frown. It's easier, the energy forces are easier. Some speak about energy forces. It's a long-term approach when we look at probability and a positive outlook, and when we look at the options rooted in good. It's a long-term approach versus that living right in the moment. And, and one example of a benefit of that is in health. If we have a long-term benefit, if we actually think that we're going to live 60 or 70 years, it's possible that we might, if we're optimistic, actually exercise and eat a little bit healthier than if we're not. And the other area where it's really positive is where it increases a creative response to problems or situations because everything is based upon a goodness and a probability that a positive solution will come out of it. And so there are creative ways that we would look at various problems when we look out into the world. I want to cite some examples for you. Political leaders. Political leaders could not lead. They could not lead countries if they were not rooted in some form of an optimistic nature. Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs could not create things out of nothing if they were not looking at some sort of long-term benefit to society. Doctors or scientists looking for a, lot, for a medical cure, looking for an answer, the age-old answer when we're looking for, uh, for a solution, something like cancer. There's a long-term look, and it's rooted in a positive nature. It's an optimistic outlook, combined with other things, of course. And, and, and I'd like to say leaders, and leaders of organizations such as the Toronto Debating Society or a volunteer organization, I would say, are, are a esteemed speaker here, because if we did not have a positive, optimistic leader leading an organization such as this, a volunteer-based organization, this would be pretty depressing, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen. Because if we didn't have an optimistic, enthusiastic leader, what's the point? 
He's, he, leaders help us define what we'd like to do in our lives, what we'd like to see in our lives. And if they're not optimistic, it just can be a little bit depressing. On the political leader side, I have a great quote from Winston Churchill, who of course led, led England during, during the war. Winston Churchill said, for myself, I am an optimist. It does not seem to be much use in something else. <coughs> How could he ever have led England through, I mean, say what you will about the man, he was an optimistic leader. How could he have ever led that country the, 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 you know, everybody on the other side of Germany, basically, how could he ever have done that if he was not optimistic? An idealist, let me make sure I look at the right quote. <laughs> <laughs> I was not looking at the right quote, so I'm glad I looked. <laughs> so to recap, it looks at the brighter side of life, an opti optimistic nature. It's a probability that something impossible can happen, and it's thoughts are deeply rooted in good. Now I will take a couple of seconds and just look at our, our opposite side, the realistic side. Because of course, ladies and gentlemen, there are some benefits when we're looking at what is realistic. And, and it's even an interesting discussion philosophically that we're having tonight between optimism against realism. Even when are really bad. And, and I'm certainly not saying it, and my most esteemed partner, contrary to the most esteemed opposition, that reality is bad. We are deeply rooted in, in the, the government is deeply founded in the sense of reality. We are quite aware of what's happening in the world, and we are quite aware of, of, of the forces that are coming. Uh, there, there are a ton of benefits to, to being realistic. There are also a ton of cons to being solely re realistic. And so what we're talking about tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is is being optimistic in nature. So to look at the probability, to creatively look at problems that come our way, to look at a longer term view of the world, a longer term view. The positive things that happen to you today can happen tomorrow. And if you're having a crummy day today, you can have a good day tomorrow. There are things that we can do and there's outlooks that we can have as we, look, as we go forward in our life and per minute, on a per minute basis. It doesn't have to be, the grand scheme of 60 years, or maybe I'll live 70 years, or maybe I have 40 years to live. It can be on a day by day, a minute by minute basis. But if we look at it and if we see the possibility that things can happen, and if we look at things creatively, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a life worth living. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I should support the resolution tonight. Prime Minister, speaking against the motion, please welcome the Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Marty. about being the uh, leader of the opposition, I was also realistic that my chances were one in four. So I am, I am happy to take on the task of discussing realism, seeing the world as it actually is, versus optimism, which is a favorable bias. Um, and I am happy to, to refute uh, much of what the esteemed prime minister said um, and introduce a couple of key points of my own. Uh, I, I'm going to start with, uh, with those key points. The financial crisis, ladies and gentlemen, was nothing if not an exercise in optimism versus realism. My housing prices are always going to go up. My stock prices are always going to up, go up. Things are always going to get better. I'm always going to be able to sell it for more than I bought it. Uh, my debt will mean less as I get the promotion at work. These are all optimistic views, and they have created a real crisis in the face of cold, hard reality. If people had actually taken a realistic view that, uh, of, of their personal financial situation and the world financial situation, we wouldn't be in the financial crisis that we're in today, and that's worldwide. Whether you go to Greece, whether you go to, to North America, whether you go to Italy, it all had to do with it's all going to be even better tomorrow. And that was an optimism that did nobody any good. 
I'm also going to suggest that this similar problem happens in the, in the realm of healthcare. Um, we have a pseudoscience industry out there of if you wear this magic bracelet, if you take this special herb, things that are not rooted in any kind of evidence or reality. And people will spend millions if not billions of dollars on this to the possible real detriment of their actual health. That's optimism. That's magical thinking version on that. And, and it doesn't help people. People who are optimists, uh, in, in particular situations, can do real damage and harm. I may be drunk, but the chances of my getting into an accident when I'm driving are not that great. It's been shown that smokers think that, well, they know that generally smoking is bad for the health. They're optimistic that their situation is different. So it can be a real problem. And, and there have been several studies to show this. Um, Armour and Taylor did a review of studies, a, a metadata study, where they found those uh, that I mentioned as well, as well as uh, students being over-optimistic about their salaries and uh, their future salaries and therefore taking on excessive debt. Um, professional financial analysts consistently overestimate uh, corporate earnings and, and so on. This re uh, results in increased risk taking and insufficient preventative care and in the end the chickens come home to roost. And it is not better, it's not better for anybody when that happens. When Steve Jobs decided that he would take some herbs and postpone some life-saving surgery, who did that benefit, really? In the end, reality came home to roost. So there's a, a real problem with this, and there, there can be an over, that, that loss of control afterwards can just really confuse people. But the optimists will keep going, you know, well, I'll just borrow some more money. Oh, well, I'll just take this magic <coughs> necklace and wear this, and that will fix it. It's, it's not a happy place, people, and I, I really would encourage you um, to, to take a more realistic view of the world. It's better in the long run. I do want to take a couple of moments to address what the Prime Minister suggested. Um, she suggested there was a health benefit to being optimistic. I will say that I have done extensive research in preparation for this that showed that there was a health benefit to being an optimist versus a realist. But maybe just a correlation. There was no demonstration that um, uh, that you had a benefit, that the benefit was caused by being optimistic. Maybe people who are healthier are just more optimistic. It's kind of hard to be, you know, cheery when you're sick, isn't it? Um, but actually, I'll, I'll, I'll be specific, that those uh, studies have all been done of optimists versus pessimists. I was able to find no research of optimists versus realists. And I, so I, I think that it's hard to say that it is better to be an optimist in terms of your health. It could be just as likely that you're optimistic because you are healthy or healthier. The idea that scientists are, are optimistic just sort of curdled me a little bit because if they're not grounded, grounded in reality, if they're optimistic, then they're as susceptible to magical thinking as everybody else. That's why there's a scientific is evidence, is it really happening, is it really working, can other people prove it, can other people do it? That's what makes science. If you're not grounded in reality, you're not doing science. So I, I, I have a, a, a question about that, that, whether it's optimism or if it's realism. I would say scientists on the whole are very realistic. And even Winston Churchill, when he calls himself an optimist, I think it was a realist, we'll fight them on the beaches. Uh, the optimists who go to war say, one Englishman is worth 10 Germans. You know, a realist says, we're gonna have to fucking fight them on the beaches, <laughs> you know? It's not, a, it's not a great place to be. So there have been a lot of studies, especially about the overconfidence. The UK government has done some studies, um, and then there were some uh, Siegelman studies as well. Um, and even in neuroscience, on how unrealistic optimism is maintained in the face of reality. People who will keep believing what they want to believe, even in the face of reality, and what that happens, that <laughs> neuroscience, that unrealistic optimism can be a real problem. It can actually affect your health care, it can affect your future. So I am going to stand here and say, two feet grounded in reality is not a bad thing. I'm not saying you're a pessimist that you have to have a negative view. You have to know how things are really working in order to be able to take your best advantage. 
And so therefore, I'm, I'm going to say it's, it's optimism is a poor choice in terms of finances. It's a poor choice in terms of health. And that if we take a look at how things really work, we're more likely to benefit in the long run. Leader of the Opposition, and now the final minister for this evening, speaking for five minutes. Please join me in welcoming the member of the government to support the Prime Minister's case. Jim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed colleague, the Prime Minister, has not reset the clock. That was a bit clearer. <laughs> I'm going to need the bell. You're <laughs> It is better to be an optimist than a pessimist. And the Prime Minister has outlined several points that uh, need to be reiterated. And then I will uh, go into uh, my own particular take on what the leader of the opposition came up with and how, how the, uh, the seconder of the government uh, also sees the, the, the point. As the Prime Minister said, it is easier to be negative than positive. Optimism isn't always going to be easy. It's the hard stretch, and that's what makes it to, to something to be attained. People out there typically are ground down, and they need to look on the bright side to get them through the day, to get them through their life. The, the Prime Minister has adequately pointed out uh, the type of people that need to be positive. The leaders, the, the, the doctors, the, the brain surgeons, the people out there that are, are searching for a better life for people, a better life for, for society. And what is it that they would do if they, they said, if they just gave up, if they said, oh, well, so-and-so did this, Therefore, and it didn't work, therefore, it's not going to be done. What would the person who had, uh, the, the child actually, that had rabies when they were seven years old, and all the, everything that had been done before to try and cure rabies, what would have happened to that child and everyone else that caught rabies for another hundred years afterwards? What would have happened if the doctor didn't say, I'm going to try it again because I believe, I believe that this is possible. The child was given the, uh, the rabies vaccine, and everyone knows that now that uh, rabies is curable. So, as, uh, as the Prime Minister pointed out, this is very valid uh, for, for doctors and scientists to be optimistic. If they were realistic, they, they would say, no, not necessarily going to happen, and maybe not pursue it. Uh, for, for, for political leaders, they have no choice. They have to be optimistic. They have to tell people how many times you turn on the television these days to say, to see uh, all about these financial crises and so on and so on. And there are the politicians of being optimistic. Yes, sometimes it doesn't work, but it does inspire people. And you see the markets going up and down depending on the optimism or the pessimism, maybe the reality of, uh, of the opposition. But, you do need optimism in your life to attain. And of course, the creativity part, as the Prime Minister pointed out. Now, the, 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 the leader of the opposition came up with some, uh, some strange ideas that the financial crisis was caused by reality, uh, was, was caused by, by optimism. So what? The, the financial crisis was caused by people who were out there just trying to out, outweigh the system, to do their best to, to make more money. The, the, the optimistic way of looking at it would be to say, um, I, I am I'm here to make some money at whatever cost, but if these people were more optimistic about society, about the future, would they need to make that much money? Would they be grounded in more of a societal uh, aspect than, than uh, pillaging the world, but um, the, as the, uh, the leader of the opposition pointed out, no one gained. Well, no, actually, some people gained. Uh, the, the people who made the money gained, and the, the, the people of the world in general uh, lost uh, their, their shirts. Now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, my, my personal points to back up the Prime Minister is optimism is a message of hope. Optimism is a way to achieve. Optimism brings more happiness than people who are based in so-called reality. There are many theories and studies out there that point to the fact that if you're happy uh, and being an optimist, you are probably more likely to be happy than if you are uh, a realist and someone who's grounded in, in the, the world as it is. You have a far better chance of surviving, of being happy, and of attaining your goals. There are studies out there, and one here by uh, the benefits of frequent positive effects, uh, where the author says that happiness and success link not only because success makes people happy, but also because positive effect engenders success. Now what that means is, the more you think you're going to succeed, the more optimistic you are, the more likely you are to succeed. It's very straightforward, ladies and gentlemen. So, also, with optimism comes hope. Hope for the future, to overcome your current reality, as the opposition would have it. You are not here just for the moment, you are here for the future, as well as for the moment. Hope... Sorry. <laughs> I hope that wasn't a double bell to say, get off. However, I assume that I'm, I'm leaving any time soon because my, my, uh, my watch ran out earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, we say on... Do I still have time? No. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, vote for the motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Government Secretary. And now, please welcome the member of the government speaking for five minutes to support the case of the opposition, Victor. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let me first uh, briefly respond to some of the points which were brought by, by the government. First of all, Jim, you said that it's easier to be negative than positive, and that people have a hard time to live from a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, it's true that uh, many people live in kind of a lives of quiet desperation, and that was a statement by Henry David Thoreau, uh, an American author, poet, and philosopher. Uh, how do we get these people out of this quiet desperation? As you said, it's easier to be negative than positive. By kind of a cheerleading squad around, just supporting them that life is going to be great? No, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be accomplished by a reality check. Henry David Thoreau was one of the American <coughs> greats, but I would like to <coughs> Now we refer to another one, Dale Carnegie, a writer, lecturer, and the developer of famous courses on self-improvement, public speaking, and interpersonal skills. He pointed out that to overcome this kind of desperation, it is absolutely necessary to find yourself, be yourself. If you don't find yourself, uh, and don't, if you are not yourself, then you are going to face a lifetime of problems. Dr. James Gilkey, Harvard graduate and minister, well known in Carnegie days, said that this problem is as old as history and as universal as human life. Yes, it is very difficult to find yourself. It is very difficult to be true to yourself. And finally, Angelo Patri, who has written 13 books and thousands of syndicated newspaper articles on the subject of child train, training. He said, nobody is so miserable as he who longs to be somebody and something other than the person he is in body and mind. Ladies and gentlemen, we see that reality, being true to yourself, is absolutely necessary for your happiness and for your life and surviving. This is a message of hope, and this hope is generated on real facts. Nobody, when you are going to select 
what you are going to study when you are preparing for life. You are not going to base it on some kind of a phony suggestions. You are going to base it on a real yourself, on your talents, on your interests. Could you imagine Bill Gates becoming a carpenter? No, I suppose you could not, because he just followed his heart, his talents, and let's look at what he accomplished. <coughs> the same applies to the job uh, when you are looking for a job, when you are buying a house, everything has to be based on the reality, on your financial situation. Can you afford that mortgage? Can you afford that uh, driving? You have to base it on your job, on your income, on your potential, on your stability, and so on, on many facts. And these are facts, factual, factual things. Well, you stated, uh, uh, Madame uh, Prime Minister, that actually it was Jim, you, that uh, positive must be, poli uh, sorry, politics must be positive. Yes, indeed, politics must be positive. It would be useful if the politics was positive. But at the same time, politics must be more than anything else real. Ladies and gentlemen, when we are dealing with this financial crisis, we have to know what we are going to do. We have to base it on the facts. When we are going to war in Libya, we have to know what is the situation of the opposition, what kind of armory uh, Gaddafi has, and what we are going to do so that we can beat him. And uh, based on the certain uh, assumptions we have made, so we need the reality on the ground. We need to know what's happening, whether it's in politics, whether, whether it's in our personal life, whether it's in uh, space program. When Apollo was flying, Apollo 13, I suppose all of you are remember that. They were not hoping, yeah, yes, maybe we will make it. We have enough power and maybe we will have enough oxygen. No, they calculated exactly how much is needed. And they told them, you have to turn that off and that off, and that way you will accomplish and you will come back home. Ladies and gentlemen, survival is based on reality. Everything is based on reality. And all this kind of a phony, uh, uh, cheerleading stuff, that is just phony. <coughs> reality is what is important. Thank you very much. Seconder for the opposition. To conclude the case for the opposition, please welcome for the summation for two minutes the leader of the opposition. Um, so the the idea that the optim it's better to be an optimist than a realist. I, I would like you to consider that the government has not in any way made their case. The first is, is the major fallacy of, of uh, correlation versus causation. People who are happier live longer. People who are happier make more progress in their careers. That's a correlation. There's been no evidence that being happy causes these things. It's just as likely that doing well in your career or being healthy makes you happy. So to, to suggest that it's better to be an optimist because it makes you happy and therefore good things happen is a series of causations that I think you cannot possibly accept. Secondly, there has been a constant confusion by the government between the, ideal, uh, the ideals of realism versus pessimism. Again, I will say that almost all of the research that I could find anywhere compared optimist to pessimist, but that is not the question we are facing tonight. Tonight we are talking about optimists versus realists. So please bear that in mind when you hear that optimists do better. Do better than whom? We haven't been very clear about that. Certainly that we have no evidence they do better than realists. Realism is based on, it, it is what causes science and progress. It does not mean giving up, but it means being grounded in reality and having some evidence for what <coughs> you're doing. And so, uh, when, when you look at a scientist, the scientists don't just magically come up with a wouldn't it be cool if. They have to actually come up with evidence and have other people prove that evidence, something that's grounded in reality. Now, as far as optimism goes, it can do real harm. Now, I know that the government said, so what about the financial crisis? I'm not sure I can go along with that. But, you know, so what? So what about the damage to health? So what about the damage in wars that are overly optimistic? As my uh, partner said, 
I would like you to seriously consider and reject the notion that it's better to be an optimist than a realist. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Leader of the Opposition. And now to conclude the case of the government, please join me in welcoming the Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, what an interesting discussion this has been. I, I made a note as I was sitting there that the opposition has confused realism with pessimism. And then the leader of the opposition got up and said that we had confused realism with pessimism. We did not, ladies and gentlemen, in any way confuse realism with pessimism. It was pretty clearly stated, all the pessimistic comments came from the realist side, not from the optimistic side. Our arguments focused on the bright, uh, bright outlook of being optimistic, of the probability that something good would happen, and that optimism is rooted in good, that it's a long-term view, that it, 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 it can, goodness can occur over goodness. We didn't talk about correlation versus causation. That, I hate to say that the leader of the opposition is trying to confuse you, but she's trying to confuse me, and I studied all of this. <laughs> and, and, and I'm optimistically realistic, I have to tell you, if you're happy, it doesn't mean you're going to have a longer life, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. I'm sorry to tell you that. It doesn't mean that whatsoever. But it means that each minute that you will be alive, you will be a little bit happier. You will have a sense that something's coming your way. You can be, you can be a little bit more optimistic about the future versus focusing on the financial debt and, and the state of the world in Greece and Northern Ireland and, and Southern <laughs> Ireland and what else did they talk about? North America, depressing. That, ladies and gentlemen, is depressing. But, but being here tonight and enjoying yourself and smiling a couple of times, that's optimism, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> about it. That is a heck of a lot better than page one of the Globe and Mail. That's all I really have to say. And, and, and yeah, ladies and gentlemen, support the resolution. Being optimistic is much, much, much better than being realistic. Here, here. good for us as adjudicators to have a bit of a challenge, uh, as much as the debaters themselves have a challenge. And uh, the first thing I want to say is that the challenge with random roles is either to be picked first, so you're the, the prime minister, as, as Jerry was saying to me earlier, uh, and then you're done. And you don't have to worry about it because it doesn't matter what anybody said, you've said your piece. And failing that, the actual challenge is to be well prepared for both sides as we don't, as we say, know what you're doing until you actually do it. And sometimes even when you do it, you may not know what you're doing. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, this evening's debate, it is better to be an optimist than a realist. Now that's a challenge. It wasn't a pessimist, and it was a realist, and that was brought up. And I think <clears throat> for, uh, for both sides, again, the challenge is not knowing what you're going to have to say and how fast you're going to have to say it. So you have to have everything organized as if you're going to speak right away. So we did get a definition that was previously sent out and organized better, more advantageous or effective, optimist, person who takes a favorable view of the world, and a realist <coughs> is a person who views the world as it literally is. So that was a good start. It, it, gave an easy way of defining the terms for everybody, both sides, and, and for the two of us as adjudicators to look at this. So what we're going to do, looking at it, we had uh, Michelle as the Prime Minister come up and provide us with uh, three points. And she said, I'm going to give you my points, so we're all ready to write them down. We had uh, optimism looks at the brighter side. <coughs> optimism um, gives a probability that something impossible will happen, and optimism is deeply rooted in the good. 
So we started writing, and just to point it out very quickly, the second and third points were very difficult to track as far as, as that. We found, uh, or I, I found anyway as well, that the first point, the brighter side, was focused on. So easier to react positively, smiling versus frowning. Uh, energy forces are easier. Again, sort of a in the air sort of pseudo-scientific comment, but nonetheless, long-term approach versus living in the moment. And, and she brought up the issue of health and exercising in a longer life, creative responses to problems, uh, the importance for political leaders uh, being optimists, entrepreneurs creating new products and dealing with uh, the business world, doctors, scientists, cures, and, and the health of other people. Um, as well, it brought in the, uh, the, the, the debating society as well. Optimism is needed for working with volunteers and the like. <coughs> again, it's sort of focused on uh, the brighter side. Not Again, not specifically in the probability that something impossible will happen or deeply rooted in the good. So, it, it, again, when you're, it's, it, again, understanding the challenge that you're going at it like this as, as a speaker with your seven minutes to go. It's very important to clearly delineate what your arguments are, what the evidence is, so that the people who are listening can assess and react as well, as well as the people on the opposite side can react and respond to your arguments and your evidence. Um, the other uh, point that was brought up, again, Churchill was brought up, the, and then, and then reality was brought up. Now, <clears throat> the points about reality in a general debate are, are good because what you want to do is say, well, the opposition is going to argue that this, and this is no good because this is why. Except that there was a lot of emphasis placed, probably two or so minutes worth of, of that. So you were actually, it wasn't that you were arguing against the reality side, you were bringing up sort of points and not arguing for your side. And I think we felt that that sort of took away from the government's uh, thrust and argumentation. Um, the member of the government, whoever that would have been, <coughs> ended up being Jim, could very easily have handled dealing with those reality points that the opposition leader would have brought up. We have four skilled debaters here, so the, the, the matter of trust isn't, isn't an issue because everybody can handle stuff that's brought up from both sides. And, and it was done well this evening as far as dealing with the back and forth that, that happens. For me, um, I, I'll, I'll summarize quickly by, by saying for the, for the government side, the arguments were more like wet cement. <laughs> as opposed to concrete with reinforcing steel bars inside. So there was stuff there, but the structure wasn't clearly defined, and the, so the functionability of it was less effective. I think, and we were talking about this outside, for me, and I will get on to the other speakers, something that would have been effective in my mind was in dealing with an optimist and a realist, if you talk about cancer care, or patients. They're walking in there, they've got cancer, that's the reality of it. But, and they know the odds, everybody knows the odds, everybody in there, everybody coming out, but you're still going to be an optimist and fight it. And you may not win, but you're going to win trying and being positive and getting support from the doctors and the other patients, your family and everybody else, and that's the importance of being an optimist. Because if you're a realist, you might as well just pull the plug right now in a cancer ward because your 23% chance is pretty much that. And I think something, I'm, whether or not, I don't know what the stats were or what research, what I'm throwing that out as, as just a, to box it in clearly and say, now, try arguing that. You get the emotional pull of it, if nothing else, because the audience is on the side. So, on to the opposition. Again, bang, good luck. You're up there, seven minutes. You've had seven minutes, and everybody's had seven minutes to write down what, what uh, Michelle's had. And we, uh, we got a very strong counterattack. Uh, there were, uh, my, my co-adjudicator counted seven 
counter arguments uh, about the financial crisis. Uh, and if people had been realistic, instead of being optimistic, the problems in Europe and in the US wouldn't have happened. People wouldn't have been in, in as dire straits as they are now. Healthcare and the magic bracelet and the special herbs and, and the magical thinking doing more harm. Uh, studies about uh, students saying they're going to get more in salaries and going out and investing in houses and cars and everything else and suddenly, whoops, you don't get that wage and oh my gosh, you're now in debt for the next 35, 45 years. Um, Steve Jobs bringing, bringing it in. Again, cancer care was brought up there. Uh, I'll just take more money, says the optimist. I'll be fine, no worries, as opposed to the realist. Uh, health benefits. Uh, were argued, you know, are people just being more optimistic? It was a causation uh, issue that was brought up as well. And, and countering uh, the, the, the quote by Winston Churchill, you know, that he was saying he was a, a realist as well, dealing with the war. Um, and in summing up, saying optimism is a poor choice for finances, health, long term view um, from the opposition's perspective, and, and as, as had been stated in very strong. Uh, detailed and well-organized arguments. Member of government came up and um, talked about uh, the other issues as well was the pessimist realist sort of um, dichotomy that was brought in uh, from the opposition side. So the member of government came back in, supported the leader. Uh, the leaders, doctors, people are searching for a better life for people and they need to be optimists. I'm going to try it again because I believe, was the quote, uh, it inspires other people. Financial crisis was not caused by uh, was was caused by people trying to outdo each other in the realism that life is bad. <laughs> so optimism is actually better because that's what caused the downfall. Um, and then the issue uh, the, the 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 rabies vaccine also was talked about. Optimism bringing hope for the future. Um, and it was a funny good handling of the timing problem. I don't know what happened there. That's offsetting when you're, you sort of expect, I heard the bell and I heard another bell about 15 seconds later. That would have set me off and just on a regular debate. So that's okay. It was good handling nonetheless and a bit of humor there. Finally, Victor, um, living life in quiet desperation, um, using realism, Dale Carnegie, being true to yourself. Bill Gates wasn't a carpenter. Apollo 13 uh, was brought up. Um, to counter, again, the government side and, and, and support the opposition side. Summations, again, correlation versus causation from the leader of the opposition, realism versus pessimism, science grounded in reality, summing up all the arguments, sort of a nice solid ball, and, and repeating the arguments again. And finally, the Prime Minister going through the three main arguments and, and ending on a very positive, if I say optimistic note. Um, <laughs> Yes. However, pessimistically, realistically, uh, we did award the debate to the opposition, and we awarded Margie as the best speaker for the evening. We did not set a numerical score. We get blamed for that. It's just a bit too challenging to try. Four three. Four three. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a popular vote? A popular vote is 10 for the opposition and 6 for the government. 10 for the opposition and 6 for the government. So the motion is defeated. And actually, before before we go too far, we've got uh, two things that we're going to use. We, we've got them, we're going to use them. The, uh, the, 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 adjudicator's, the adjudicator's Cup uh, goes to the Leader of the Opposition, as does the, the People's Choice Award. Uh,